the science behind the law of attraction. I want to get into the physics or quantum physics behind the law of attraction or manifestation. And as a scientist, this is my absolute favorite topic to explore and explain. Because once we understand manifestation from this scientific point of view, it becomes a little bit less subjective, a little bit less arbitrary. And we understand actually we're working with energy. We're working with the resonance of frequencies. We always have to remember that science is a language. It is a way to explain things that really appeal to the rational mind. Science is defined through physical proof. Now, there are limits to science and what science can measure. For example, we can't measure thoughts outside of the brain, which I'll get into in a little bit. But the main things I want to talk about today is the frequency of your thoughts and the resonance of frequencies is actually how you manifest things into your life. Why energy is quantized and what this term means, quantum jumping, and how this relates back to actual quantum chemistry and physics. And how can the frequency of your thoughts then actually manifest things into reality? Let me get into it. My name is Davy. I am a PhD student in chemical engineering at the University of Cambridge. And in my free time, I mainly love to study things like this, linking science back to manifestation. Let's first talk about the frequency of your thoughts. When we talk about frequency, we're talking about waves. What we need to understand about waves is that they spread everywhere, right? When something is behaving as a wave, we can't locate it in one specific position. That is the same with light, for example. Light is waves and it spreads everywhere. We can't locate light in one position unless we monitor it and it reaches a specific sensor. Now, the frequency of your thoughts, when we measure thoughts, we get electromagnetic signals in the brain. Light is also a form of electromagnetic radiation. So we can see thoughts as frequencies. Now, it is kind of hard to understand what frequency do we associate with a thought. And what the frequency of a thought actually is, is the energy that we give to thoughts. Thoughts only get a frequency once they start to resonate with us and once we start to feed them energy. What we also know in physics is in Planck's law, it is described that everything that has a specific frequency also has an energy associated with it. How can you actually view the frequency of your thoughts? It all has to do with the energy we give it, which we experience as humans, as emotions. The thought on itself is not necessarily the thing that has a frequency. The thought is presented to us, occurs in our brain, and once it starts to resonate, once we start to give energy to that thought, is when it gets a frequency. We might have a million thoughts at the same time, but not all of them are resonating, not all of them are affecting our specific frequency at the time. And the fact that emotions can be measured as frequencies has been pre previously described in this study by Dr. Hawkins. You actually see this in your body as well, right? As the muscle contractions that you get when you are really excited or when you're really happy or when you're really anxious, you can feel the energy in your body tensing up. And that is the energy that we give to thoughts. So why can we not measure thoughts as particles? This comes back in the uncertainty principle of Heisenberg, that everything that has a frequency or behaves as a wave does not have a mass at the same time. And everything that behaves as a mass, as a particle, cannot have a frequency at the same time. These properties are mutually exclusive. So if a thought is behaving as a frequency, just like light, it cannot have a mass. Now, what does it mean for something to not have a mass? Is that it goes beyond space and time. But we know that thoughts can travel outside of the brain. Have you never had a telepathic experience? There's a part of us that knows, and there's no physical proof for this, but there's a part of us that knows that thoughts can travel beyond space and time. Even when we're dreaming, where do we go, right? It is beyond our physical 3D, 4D reality. It is beyond space and time. Now, another thing to understand about waves is that they love to resonate, right? When two waves resonate, it means they're vibrating at the same frequency and they can interact with each other and form a union and even increase each other's strength. This interaction of waves is what we're working with with manifestation. So you kind of have to see yourself as a little radio 
and you're constantly emitting frequencies, which is the emotion and the energy that we give to specific thoughts. And the universe consists out of all of these channels or realities of different frequencies. Now the frequency that we're on is determined by the frequency that we emit from our radio, from our brain. A lot of people then get the question like, okay, but if we're all in a different frequency, how can we all exist in the same 3D reality? Or are there other realities where other people exist in? I can't give this an answer for definite, but what I think is what is happening is that the people that you interact with are on your frequency, are resonating with you in some type of way, right? And there are a lot of people that walk around that you don't interact with at all and that you don't resonate with. Do you never encounter people where you're just like, oh, we're so not on the same frequency, we're so not on the same vibe. And I think we are all living in the same 3D reality here, but the people that we interact with is the people that are on our frequency and that are resonating with us. And the things that happen to us, we're resonating with us. Something in our frequency aligned to that. Now I wanna talk a little bit about quantum physics and the phenomenon that we first encountered on an atomic and subatomic scale. The word quantum stands for quantized. So you have to imagine in chemistry, we talk about particles, which is molecules. Now, if you break a molecule down, we go to atoms. If you actually look at the actual atom, what it is made up of, it is made up of neutrons, protons, and electrons. The electrons are sort of spinning around the middle part, like the planets are spinning around the sun, and the middle part is the neutrons and the protons. What they started to find out in quantum chemistry is that actually these particles also have a frequency they also can behave as waves. So this is interesting. And then we came to the realization, and that is where the uncertainty of Heisenberg also came in. Actually, everything that has a mass also has a frequency. However, we can never measure these two things at the same time. So what they found out when they did the slit experiment, for example, with electrons, we always thought electrons were particles because they do have a mass, very tiny, but they do. And actually, when we try to measure it as a wave, we can see it as a wave and it forms diffraction patterns. And when we try to observe it as a mass, it behaves as a mass. Now, there's something else for this to say, which is what about the intention of the researcher? Maybe we all just manifest what we want to see. Maybe science is one big manifestation because there's always an intention of the researcher there. There's a hypothesis. Why don't we always just find our hypotheses because we're manifesting the outcome. That is a whole nother rant that would literally dismantle science completely, but I don't want to get into that. So what we found out here for the first time in quantum physics, when quantum physics arose, is like, okay, energy at this level is quantized. It exists at discrete values. Now, let's link this back to our frequency, right? Which is our emotion. Have you never noticed that once you sort of jump from one thought to another, your mood can completely shift? Have you never had an extreme mood swing? Or have you never felt a switch in you or something that sort of like made you go from one emotion to another in quite an extreme way? So we say the thought has the frequency, but actually the frequency of the thought is based on our emotions. So we kind of have to see it as the thought is the projector or the movie that we're watching. But how we feel is our energy that we give to whatever we're watching or whatever we're thinking. Thoughts are neutral entities. When you think about it, it is us and our perceptions and our emotions that are actually giving meaning to every thought. And I want you to remember this because thoughts can be really scary and your brain can be filled with positive thoughts and the other moment be so negative and filled with negative thoughts. There is no structure or order there. Thoughts are chaotic. Sometimes a positive one is presented to you, sometimes a negative one is presented to you. As soon as we decide to clench onto a thought, to believe the thought, feed it our energy and start to worry about it is when the thought starts to spiral. 
is when the thought starts to truly resonate with us because this is again the resonance of frequencies now what we're doing in manifestation and scripting and visualizing you have to imagine that there are a lot of thoughts floating around in your brain and it is probably related to the specific frequency of reality that you're currently living in or in other words the way you're currently feeling your thoughts are a reflection or are actually the feeders of the way you're feeling right now and these there are probably a few thoughts that are predominant that keep reoccurring during the day a lot of our thoughts just repeat during the day and that is the frequency we're on overall now what we're doing is scripting and visualization is we're introducing new thoughts we're introducing a whole new script or a whole new scenario or a whole new imagination. Your emotions do not care whether something is a physical reality event or whether something is a visual imagination. You can equally get invested in an imagination as in a real life 3D space and time event. So we're introducing a new frequency in our brain. And especially when there are a lot of the old frequencies there, through a thought or through a visual that we present to us, we jump to a higher frequency temporarily. Once we do this with enough consistency and once that new reality that we're creating in our head starts to actually resonate with us fully and we're able to sort of shed and let go of our old thoughts and frequencies is when we quantum jump. That is when we quantum jump to a higher reality. And this can be very instant. People that are really good at manifesting and letting go of the old can sort of create a new visual, create a new thought and jump. Okay, well, how do I do that? You're constantly quantum jumping. Sometimes you might quantum jump down, which is like maybe you're in a good mood and something happens and immediately you're like down a negative spiral. So you made a jump and all we want to do manifestation is the opposite is like we want to jump upwards we're artificially and it's a it's an artificial practice where it's like manually telling ourselves different things manually feeding ourselves different thoughts manually feeding ourselves different visuals and different scripts and different imaginations to see if our feelings can go to the higher frequency as often as we can during the day we're walking around pretending we already have our desire we're doing scripting we're doing visualizing we're doing affirmations and that is when we can make a quantum jump into a higher reality lastly i want to talk a little bit more about how can an actual frequency of your brain determine what happens in your reality and this is where the law of assumption comes in and actually einstein wrote a really beautiful essay about the law of assumption not using the words law of assumption but he talks about perception in his essay physics and reality that he wrote in 1936 how can the frequency of our brain actually manifest things into reality the brain works in patterns and correlations so your brain can only perceive and think of things it has thought of before or it has seen before and most of these things are raptured in our belief system are based on our past experiences are based on what people told us are based on what we've seen before and that sort of like encapsulation of memories forms our belief system now our belief system are the thoughts that we hold about reality which is the frequency we then also emit into this physical world which is then the things that we perceive so it's like if we watch a lot of movies about love we suddenly will look around and notice couples a lot more it is not because those couples weren't there before it is because our perception changes based on what we are already thinking about or what we are already carrying with us this is the exact principle we're making use of with the law of attraction and with manifestation we are pre-training our brain with a specific script or with a specific visual for a future reality that we want to live in but with that visual or script we've created a new pattern with that script or visual you've actually created a new reality that isn't here yet in this 3d world World, but you've created it in the mind and if you can hold it in the mind there is a reality of you having that and then we're making
making use of this beautiful phenomenon of the brain, which is it loves to correlate. Once you have that script or visual somewhere stored in your brain and you've been through that, your brain thinks it has been through that. It thinks it is an experience. And afterwards, your perception of reality changes. And how can you see this come back? Well, for one, you will see opportunity. Before, if you've never scripted or visualized about, for example, being an entrepreneur or for example, being a millionaire or whatever desire you have, if you've never scripted or visualized about it before, you can't even perceive the opportunities when they're presented to you because your brain doesn't recognize it. So we're making use of this phenomenon here by pre-training our brain. Our feelings don't care if we've been through that or not. So we actually get into that frequency through our feelings. And then our perception of reality changes afterwards where we will perceive so one, we perceive opportunity. Secondly, we will feel way more motivated and way more confident to actually take action on that opportunity. Why? Simply because your brain thinks you've already been through it. The brain is pre-programmed to work from fear. And it is always afraid of the unknown. It is always afraid of things it has never done before or it has never seen before. We're making use of this phenomenon with scripting and with visualizing because by scripting and visualizing, your brain thinks it has been through that. If you, for example, imagine running a race and finishing it, when you actually go through the experience, your brain will think it already has been through it and it will be way less scary and way less intimidating. Why, for example, if you're going to have a presentation or something, it is so important to practice first where you actually visualize all of the people being there because then when it actually comes to it and when you do the presentation, it will be way less scary because again, your brain thinks it has already been through it. So it's less afraid and it is more confident and it is able to perceive the opportunity. Now, if you feel like you've been trying all of these scripting techniques and manifestation techniques, but it hasn't been successful for you, I want to help you on a day-to-day -day basis and teach you the science of manifesting. So through daily practices, guided practices and daily journaling and weekly coaching videos, I can help you identity shift and reality shift into a higher version of you, the one that is in alignment with their desires. And this is through my five week manifestation course, Mastering the Science of Manifesting. Five weeks is the scientifically proven time that I need to actually ignite an identity shift in you. And in the course, we're going to define the highest future version that we're working towards, the one that has manifested all of our desires. And through a very efficient methodology, practices and techniques that I'm going to teach you on a day-to-day -day basis, you are going to quantum jump and get to these higher levels of reality. And after the course, you will have made the identity shift and stepped into the highest future version of you and reached your full potential. So if you want my guidance on that, go check out my course on my website. The link is below and I would love to have you on and help you out further. Now, thank you so much for watching. If you made it up until here, I really appreciate you. Definitely leave me a like if there was anything useful. Subscribe to my channel. Also follow me on Instagram, which is davylower-citram. And I would love to see you in my next video. Sending you my love.